Thank you, everybody, for joining us. This is Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online. Now, if everybody in the audience could just uh, please keep it down for just a minute. It's getting really loud. i got I got to concentrate for this introduction. Uh, but in all seriousness, thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you for your patience with us over the past few months. It's been an, uh, an adventurous time for us all. Um, you know, the coronavirus has really affected everybody. Uh, but that said, we really have a great cause for you all with Doctors Without Borders. And uh, I, before we get into the runners, I'd like to first introduce Layla and Greta from Doctors Without Borders to quickly introduce themselves and the charity to you. Thanks, Matt. And hi, everybody. We're so excited to be here with you at Summer Games Done Quick for the eighth incredible year. Doctors Without Borders, also known by our French name, Médecins Sans Frontières, or MSF, is an independent international medical humanitarian organization providing emergency aid to those affected by armed conflict, epidemics, natural or man-made disasters, and exclusion from healthcare. Our teams consist of tens of thousands of healthcare professionals, logistics, and administrative staff, all bound together under our charter and working under the guiding principles of medical ethics, impartiality, neutrality, and independence. Our teams work in over 70 countries across the globe, and this year we started supporting operations in the U.S. in response to COVID-19. Our recent response to the coronavirus outbreak in the United States included working with local authorities and partner organizations serving vulnerable communities, such as long-term care facilities in Michigan and Florida, supporting the Navajo Nation in New Mexico and Arizona, and working with and supporting homeless communities in New York City. MSF was founded nearly 50 years ago in 1971 in Paris by a group of journalists and doctors. Today, we're a worldwide movement of more than 67,000 people, and you are a part of our movement. We rarely take funds from governments or public funds for our work. We rely on small donations, mainly from individual members of the public. Over 90% of our income comes from individual donations just like the ones you'll be given this week. This means that when there is an emergency, we don't need to wait for official funds to be released or for the media to generate interest. We can act fast to save people's lives based on need alone. To give you an example of the impact that this community has had on those helping those who need it the most, last year, Summer Games Done Quick raised over $3 million, which is enough to fund the equivalent of all of our US operations during COVID-19. MSF and vulnerable populations across the globe need you now more than ever before. Summer Games Done Quick is Doctors Without Borders' largest fundraising event by far. And that's thanks to the dedication of this amazing community and the hard work of this incredible team. Over the years, Summer Games Done Quick has raised over $10.5 million for MSF, having a major impact on our life-saving work. It's just incredible. So from the bottom of our hearts, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. From all of us at MSF to all of you at home, to the entire GDQ team, to Matt, Mike, and Kasumi, to the over 140 amazingly talented runners, and to all of the volunteers who have spent much time and effort preparing for this wonderful event. And of course, thank you to all of our donors and our corporate sponsors, who make all of this work possible. We thank you so much and we couldn't be more excited. So Matt, take it away and let's get started. All right, thank you Greta and Layla for your introductions and I don't have anything more for you. I think it's time to get right into the runners. First up is Berto Please with Demon Souls and let's start it off as we always do. Twitch chat if you can join me in from 10, 10, 9, 8, 6. Six, what about seven? Just kidding. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, go! Hi everyone, welcome to Summer Games Done Quick 2020 online, powered by Twitch. I am Squint, your host, and up first is Demon Souls with Berta Please and Ashwin. 
Hello, I'm Berta, please. I will be running Demon Souls 90% here. I'm joined by my commentator, Ashwin. Hi, I'm Ashwin. I've been watching Berta do Demon Souls speedruns since the very beginning. Uh, I don't run Demon Souls, but I do run Dark Souls, so I have familiarity with both. Mm -hmm. So Demon Souls is an action RPG game. Uh, if the name sounds familiar, it is because it is a predecessor to Dark Souls. Uh, it was made by From Software as well, uh, two years before that game came out. Um, it has been very overshadowed by the other games, however, it never really got the spotlight it really deserved. It was mostly a game, uh, word of mouth kind of thing, how it spread. Um, for our character choice or class, we're going to start with Hunter class. Uh, this will start us off with the Battle Axe and the Longbow, which are the main items we'll need for the game, the main weapons. Uh, we'll only be getting one other weapon additionally after that, but that's what we need. Uh, stats are they're pretty good for what we need, but they're not the main focus. And then finally, the gender is relevant. Uh, the only reason I say that is because in a few of the Souls games, uh, gender is kind of relevant because some bugs act differently with the different character models, but this one doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to quickly go into the tutorial prompt to get started. Uh, I'll count down in a few seconds. Thankfully, you don't have to do tutorial. The, the game actually lets you skip it. Uh, but yeah, so starting down in three, two, one, go. All right, so we're gonna kick off the speed run by giving you a bit of lore. In Demon's Souls, we play a hero who tries to save the cursed kingdom of Boletario, which we're gonna enter in a second, from being consumed by a demon known as the Old One, and to destroy the one who summoned him, King Gallant. The hero is gonna travel through different worlds, which there are five, beat the arch demons, which are the uh, end level bosses, and gather the strength to face Alant. In any percent, we don't actually need to fight all the bosses, as you'll see later with the skips in this category, but we will fight all the arch demons. Good luck, Bardo. Thank you. Uh, quick note, as you saw there, uh, there was a little bit of frame drops in my game. That is actually just because I was matching start a little uh, too hard in the beginning. That would actually cause a few enemies to have despawned. Uh, that is not a big time save, but it does help that there's no enemies blocking you in some doorways. Uh, there will be one enemy that's going to be missing here in a second. Uh, after this one. Okay, so they're here in this doorway. There will be an enemy right there normally, but it's not. Uh, first item we're going to get is the fire bombs. Uh, this will help for, for the first boss phalanx coming up. Uh, right here, this will be another enemy that's missing with this two there. Uh, yeah, fire bombs are fire damage. We'll also be getting uh, turpentine, which is a fire buff for our weapon. Both of those will help us take down phalanx all faster. Uh, we do start with plus zero weapons, base level class uh, for our character. So, not much damage we got unless we add these items. Uh, right here, we're going to abuse invincibility frames that a roll has, like so. Uh, that will let us get over the boulder a little faster. Um, all the Souls games pretty much have a roll that has a set amount of invincibility frames, which are really nice to get past the uh, long things. Uh, in this game specifically, you could even use them to get basically for a skip, essentially. So it is very nice to have. And then lastly, uh, this game is on PlayStation 3. Uh, things to note, this is a digital version of the game. Uh, it is also, my PlayStation 3 has a solid state drive as opposed to a hard drive. Uh, those helps with the performance overall. And lastly, we have, before we did this run of this event, we did one entire run called a preload run. And all that does is basically optimizes the load screens and the areas essentially. So all the areas will be somewhat loaded in already. Uh, that would just cut down on the load screens. And yeah, it just helps a lot for marathons and PB attempts, all that kind of things. Okay, and then here, uh, this is probably the most dangerous area of the game right here, uh, this area, rather. Um, you can get cornered by enemies really quickly and it can be lethal. Uh, this The whole level isn't too bad besides being a little bit RNG heavy, but this is a little bit risky. Okay. That was a little, little hairy, but we caught it. Okay. <laughs> Mm, yeah, so we need to hit this lever. This will unlock the boss of this area. And then shortly after, we're going to get Turpentine, the buff I was mentioning earlier. And we got all the items in this level. So uh, dying after this point, after getting the Turpentine, isn't too big of a deal, but I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to heal here just to have a little bit of padding because I'm going to take a few high drops, which won't kill us. Demon Souls fall damage isn't too bad. Okay, that was a little risky, but okay. As long as you have over half health, you should be okay for the drops. Heal again real quick. I'm gonna apply turpentine now as we wait this door to open. 
and we got our first boss phalanx now uh, before we actually see the boss i'm gonna look up to aim these bombs ahead of uh phalanx there's a lot of little ads around it there's running boss that will actually heal it too so we want to spread them out as much as possible okay there's the boss uh, as we start hitting the boss, we're going to hope that they drop a Shard of Hearthstone, which is an upgrade material we're going to need in the run. I don't see any yet. Not a big deal, we don't get it, but oh, there's an item there, maybe that's it. Yep, that was it. Cool. Yeah, we're going to need this for our weapons. Not a big deal, we don't get it, we can actually just buy it, but we did get it. And it's a nice time save. Now we're gonna grab this arch stone and we're back to the nexus. Um, when we're back here, all we're gonna do is uh, pick up an item from the blacksmith merchant, uh, the dagger. We're gonna equip it on the way up to the nexus as we go talk to the monumental. And yeah, we're gonna need this dagger for a few reasons, but the main one is the next boss, Flame Necker. So you're actually gonna be seeing a lot of the nexus in this run. The hero is bound to a nexus until the old one is bound once more and returned to slumber. The nexus serves as a hub, a place of refuge for our hero to increase their power and to travel to the five different worlds through the five different archstones. There's a monumental here that resides in the nexus that will ask you to help them save the world. And then only once we speak to them, like Berto's gonna do, um, it will unlock the archstones and allow us to travel freely. And before we return back to the uh, next world, we're going to pick up a safety item here, the Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. Uh, this item is essentially humanity from Dark Souls, although in this game, whenever you die, you actually have you have your health cut in half. So this item will bring that back to full. Um, only, other re only other way to do it, uh, to bring it back to full, is by killing a uh, boss. But we're going to be duplicating this item uh, shortly. And, you know, just a nice safety strat in case we die. You know, it is a From Software game, it's very possible. But hopefully, we'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, so... Right here, this merchant over there would be the one we buy the, the Shard of Hearthstone if we didn't get it, but we're okay. And then coming up, we're gonna grab a magic buff item now instead of fire with, the fan with a fantastic name. I'll let you see yourself. <laughs> um, and then shortly after, we're going to chew a few pots that are covering a doorway. Uh, this will let a few dogs that are standing behind it uh, be unleashed a little bit early. That way they don't block us on our way there. And then... Okay, as soon as we get past... Okay, we're good. And then after that, we're going to have our first major skip of the run, uh, the spider skip. So, Stonefang Tunnel is actually really large and ends with a boss called Armored Spider, but since it takes so long to traverse it, we're going to do a skip instead. Um, spider Skip helps us skip the rest of 2-1 um, and by attempting to load into a tunnel in 2-2. Two, two. We do this by going out of bounds, as Birdo is doing here, and aiming to fall on the slope of a tunnel and abusing something called a reload. Now, a reload during a fall like right there, the game will try and restore our position to the closest and most stable position. And since we actually touched the tunnel, that is uh, fortunately the closest <laughs> and uh, the game will try and like spawn us in within 2-2 two, two. okay we actually got a really fast version of it where we that's uh, amazing land. we don't yeah we don't have to actually do the full set to reload so that's really fast in real time yeah so now that we're actually in this tunnel we're gonna do and form um, a glitch that is uh, really important it's called a dupe since the sticky white stuff is rare and a powerful buff we're gonna duplicate it when queuing up an action during an animation such as the role that Berto did there you can go into your inventory menu and quickly use another consumable instead thus tricking the game to consume it um, instead of the sticky white stuff and duplicating it we're we're gonna use that buff to kill that enemy in the tunnel that you just saw and we're gonna obtain upgrade materials like the large shard of hearthstone and chunks which will be used later okay so slight uh angle off so i almost died there hopefully or thankfully we didn't die but yeah this should be good okay cool so yeah that first roll is a little bit tricky so that's not too surprising that it happened um and it, the only other thing you need to know about these drops is that we do something called a toggle escape which uh, lets us basically skip the landing animation. Uh, whenever you fall, you, you know, have a little bit of, a, of an animation when you uh, land. So all we do is do a toggle escape, and then we can just skip that animation and you know, keep running right away, pretty much. Now we're going to pick up this heal, and uh, I am going to do the Tsukiwa stuff one more time uh, for safety in this boss, uh, just in case my buff runs out before the boss is dead. Uh, that way I don't have to dupe it mid-fight, so... Is this Flame Nurker? Right. 
So, Flamelurker is actually an RNG heavy boss and quite aggressive and takes minimal damage when fighting. That's where we're using the sticky white stuff to improve our damage output since he's weak to magic and try and take him out as fast as possible. We're using the dagger here instead of the axe just because it, we're just basically doing uh, faster DPS, faster R1s on the boss um, rather than the slow R1s of the axe. He tends to swipe. Um, and like he has like a lot of AOE attacks and pounce attacks, so Berta will try and stay as close as possible to his limbs and butt for those quick R ones and avoid his attacks and hopefully not die. He is a really scary boss to go against, and if done quickly, then uh, hopefully sticky white stuff will not run out, which is what we want. If the fight goes too slow and he's too RNG heavy, the buff will run out, and then we'll have to fight him in a much slower fashion. He's hopping around a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it was actually okay. I did a quick uh, safety heal just to make sure I don't die. But it was good. We used to have the buff and we're gone. Yeah. Um, so right after the boss, we have our first Archdemon, the Dragon God. Um, he comes off as a really imposing enemy when you see him in the trailers and whatnot. However, sadly, he's just a gimmick boss. So running through this boss arena is based on cycles where the Dragon God will detect us and either punch us or breathe fire on us. But Birdo will basically use pillars to hide behind them and reset the boss's aggro by healing and waiting to push forward. So it's literally just a very cycle-based boss. And hopefully, like, the Dragon God won't detect Birdo and he'll slip right on through, uh, getting to our first objective, which is firing a ballista that takes out a good portion of his HP. Like I said, gimmick boss. Um, and then Berto will try and head to the other side of the arena, like basically just, you know, rolling over any of the obstacles to get there as fast as possible. Hopefully Dragon God also doesn't detect us. Yeah, it looks like a good cycle. Yeah. Should be okay. Looking good. And the second ballista, and that will take out the next majority of his health, but leaving a sliver for us to take care of ourselves. So there's a tiny bit of fighting in this boss fight, but... A little bit. Yeah, but before we actually do that, we're gonna pick up a major item in this speed run called the uh, Master Ring. The Master Ring basically gives us a 15% increased damage on our sweet spot of our ax, which is our major weapon of this uh, speed run. And it's really just handy to use, um, and it only applies on the ax. But before we fight the Dragon God, we're gonna apply the sticky white stuff because he's actually weak to that, and hit him in the horn a few times, and that should be it. First Archdemon. Mm -hmm. One more hit, done. Awesome. So yeah, we're gonna remove a little bit of armor for a another ring we're gonna get uh, in a few minutes. Uh, but now we're gonna touch the archstone uh, that has a soul item we're gonna need shortly for upgrading and leveling. Uh, but yeah, now back to the Nexus for said leveling and upgrading. All right, so we just showed you uh, one dupe. This is another version called a Thomas dupe. Um, it starts the same way the previous one did. We actually queue up the Nexial binding. And instead of duping it with another consumable, we're going to save the confirmation prompt of yes and no um, by exiting the menu with start. And then we talk to Thomas to deposit the upgrade materials, Shard of Hearthstone, Large Shard, and Chunks. Doing this makes the quantity roll to negative one, which is game reads as a positive quantity and underflows it to the maximum number the game reads, which is about 1,000. 23 the max stack value so these items are now duped a thousand times and we can use these upgrade materials to upgrade the battle axe and the longbow which uh we're gonna do at uh baldwin and uh they're gonna be upgraded to plus nine each sometimes also Berto will uh upgrade uh, or not upgrade well he'll try and dupe the uh, moon grass just for safety strats so that he would have them available hopefully he took them out of the box mm, i did okay awesome Okay. Yeah, so now we're upgrading plus nine, I said above. Uh, the longbow actually doesn't need to be plus nine technically. Um, it is just a little bit safer. Uh, for one of the bosses later on, you can have it at plus eight, uh, but it will reduce the range you have on it. So it is. it only costs a second tops to upgrade to plus nine, so I'm just going to do that. And then we talked to the best yeah. NPC in the game, made them black. Mm -hmm. And uh, we upgrade uh, our stats uh, we're going to have. Um, 15 endurance, 34 strength, and that, that's basically all the upgrading that we have to do in this run. Mm, pretty much it. Uh, this is why the, this run is superior to the, the old magic run. Uh, just going out of your way to get those really powerful spells is a really big time sink, so overall this is just a better way to do it. Uh, but yeah, so right now all we're going to do is pick up a key and then we're back to the Nexus, so this would be a good time for a quick donation. Alright, we got a few. Uh, we have a $50 donation from Cakers55. And they write, Good luck with the run, Berto. Booked the day off work just for this. 
We are all super proud Ooh. of you, dude. Have a great one. Thank, Thank you, Kakers. Kakers. Time for another? Uh, another quick one, this. Okay. Uh, Alex9K donates $25 and says, Go, Birdo. Take them, demon souls. Poggers. <laughs> Thank Bring you, Alex. Bring me a demon soul. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Kickers. Uh, so, yeah, now we got those keys. Uh, now we're working back to the Nexus. This is actually faster to do, both in RTA and in-game time, uh, because, you know, just running back to the beginning of the level is just a little bit too much of a time sink. So all we got to do is work back to Nexus and then go back right in. Pretty neat strategy. And then immediately after, uh, we're going to go to our right, after the Archstone. This door, we're going to actually do a reload here, uh, but not for the reasons you might expect. If you've seen any other Speed uh, other speed Souls games, the Dark Souls, Bloodborne, usually they do reloads here and doors to skip that opening animation. Uh, that is partly why we do it, but we also do this here to reset an enemy position. Uh, we got a skip coming up here, which will have an enemy snapping at us during the skip, which it's already a little bit tough as is, so having an enemy bothering us is not a good thing, so... Yeah, we're now going to that skip, uh, the Latria skip. Right, so the prison portion of the Tower of Latria actually has many levels. It takes a really long time to go through, um, and instead of just going through it, we execute something called the Latria skip, which allows us to conveniently skip those levels by rolling on the inner railings of the tower. There's three consecutive drops in just the right place, and we can make it to the bottom. And hopefully, Berta will do this first try. Awesome. Nice. Oh, nice job. It, he made it look really easy, but this is so hard to pull off because you need to be in the precise place and angle to do it. <laughs> so that was really impressive. Good job. Thank you. Um, and coming right up after this, we have something called the arrow trap skip. So there's like a barrage of arrows that are coming down on us as we like cross this bridge. Uh, to avoid them, we're going to abuse the iframes uh, and basically roll past the damage. We're going to take some intentional damage to set up something for a ring that we're going to pick up in the middle of this barrage called the clever rat ring. Now the clever rat ring works similarly to the red tear stone ring in Dark Souls, which increases attack power when the HP is below 30%. You'll see that Birdo will uh, set this uh, HP up soon for multiple bosses. Um, trigger the clever rat ring range, which you'll see visually represented by this menacing red aura around this character. And also, you'll see a cute little rat under the HP bar. Yep, yep. Uh, we didn't quite get that because we only took one arrow hit. You didn't want to take two. Uh, but, and I could have set it up a little bit after, but just to be safe, I'm going to wait a little bit. For now, it only affects this enemy we're going to hit uh, right here. Um, so yeah, speaking of which, uh, this boss, uh, Fool's Idol, will actually be revived if you don't kill this enemy back in the end of the tunnel. What will happen is that if you try to go to the boss first, um, you'll get this boss to 0 HP, uh, and then you get taunted by this NPC on, on the roof and just tells you, you can't kill this, this boss. So you actually, you can actually go back through the fog gate like, where you entered. And go by Reckon, because the boss will still be alive. Oh. Yeah, we kill that enemy just to get rid of him. And the boss who should be die should die now. Yeah, now we got full Zydal. Uh We're going to get our way over there. We need to push this enemy out of the way. Okay, cool. It can be really annoying sometimes. But as you can see, this is an early game boss. As it only took four hits to get it down. <laughs> Pretty good. I mean, clever right ring range definitely helped you a lot there as well mm -hmm. which is why we use it for this run so this segment here Berta is gonna focus a little bit because we're trying to catch an elevator at just the right time before it passes us by um he's gonna work a lot on his pathing and something called stamina management which we haven't really explained in this run just yet as you can see his green bar below his hp is constantly like depleting we want to make sure that we never fully deplete it because if you allow the character to fully deplete the stamina bar it, you're gonna have to wait for the entirety of the stamina to regen and then wait up a little bit before the running animation starts again and we don't want that 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 just is way too slow and it's not optimal strategy for running through this area so we always wait uh, until it's almost fully depleted let go of the running and then resume it immediately and we won't have to have any of those like delayed running animations um, it's a lot of like intricacies that people don't think about in a speedrun, but also speedrunners will make sure that they never have to regen more stamina than they need. Like there's a door in front of you by a meter, you're not going to regen the entire stamina bar because that's just 
obsolete. You only regen what you need. So it's it's a lot of like thinking when you're running through these areas, like both from pathing, stamina management, moving around enemies in ways that they behave properly. And if all done well, Birdo should be catching this elevator here on time. It's honestly just about optimization. It's about just making sure you don't have to wait a few extra seconds if you miss it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, did we catch it? I think not. Oh. <laughs> Either too early, too late. A little unsure. That's it okay. This elevator is not. But at least yeah, now you can see. A... Yeah, it's a, a short one, so it's no big deal. Yeah. So uh, we, the purpose for, for running through this level, uh, the boss is technically accessible from the beginning, but there is something blocking the way. Uh, there's two chains that are bound to this uh, obstacle blocking it, and there's four enemies in each chain. We have to take care of those, and the first chain will be released. Uh, but we do have to make our way through the entire rest of the level here, so to get to the second chain. So, uh, someone find a skip, please. This would yeah. be very nice. Yeah, hunters, please. <laughs> like, we were talking we, about this we earlier. We require your help. Yeah. Um, like, this, the world record for this run is, what, 40, 35, I believe? Mm -hmm. And this is one of the longest segments that you just have to run through, um, doing absolutely nothing just to get to your objective. Yeah, so th if there's anything that could use a skip, this this would be it. This would this would make the wreck be like just up for grabs again. You could save easily like five minutes or so. Small note, also Berta got on top of the elevator instead inside it because it's faster. You know, you ride your elevators on top of them, <laughs> not inside them to get off them faster. <laughs> yeah, the, the door opening animation is too slow. So yeah, we too you slow. just ride on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't try this at home. No, please don't. Okay, so. Uh, this would be another little small segment for a donation as well. There's a lot of running going on. All right. Um, how about a $25 donation from Watch Behind, who writes, Hey, Birdo, good luck. We're rooting for you in Apollo's chat. Ooh. Thanks, guys. Yep. I'll check back in later. <laughs> we have a uh, $10 donation from Orni219, who says... Let's go, Berto. I'm proud of you. Show the world your <laughs> skills. Please help me. Please help me. Please, Please help me. <laughs> there was actually one of the um, NPCs in Tower of Latria earlier when we were doing the Latria skip that just like struggling to get out of his cell and get noticed, and he screams, mm -hmm. "Please help me!" Yeah, unfortunately, he's too out of the way for any percent. So maybe in all trophies, Riddell, the Riddell's name. Thank you, Orny. Thank you, Watch. Uh, so yeah, we did a quick reload here to reset another elevator coming up. Uh, this one is definitely a big time loss if you miss it. So just just to offset that, we're going to reload and reset it, and we should be getting to it right as it comes down, basically. So, neat little reload trick. Just quick, powerful tool for resetting a lot of things, both enemies and this kind of fun. Uh, we're gonna reapply our armor real quick, and just a quick little fun little trick here. If you run to this corner of the elevator, uh, there will be a gargoyle on top of this uh, tower that will actually just fall down if you do this. There he goes. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, so that, that will, he can be a little nuisance, especially in clever item range, so it's just nice to get him out of the way. Yeah, so here we are at the second chain. Getting these four enemies down. There we go. And now the boss is open. The infamous man-eater. Yeah, it's just interesting, like, how many, like, small things you do in terms of movements and whatnot to just get the AI of the enemies to behave the way you want them rather than just rely on their random RNG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one in particular is very strange. I don't know why it's walking into a corner makes them fall, but there are a lot of little things like this in the whole run. Like, this enemy would like to draw it to the side and then just run around it, for example. Oh. Quick look. There's a lot of little things like that throughout the whole run, and I feel like most people who've tried this game find that the areas are harder than the bosses usually, and that that might be one reason. It's just that there's a lot of little things that you have to learn with time, or you know, point it out to you. You you pass by the centipede with the really strange face that has the same face on Man Eater. Yeah, supposedly uh, the old monk, the the archie in this level, is trying to create demons, and uh, I guess Man Eaters and the centipedes are the same. Uh, yeah, they're chimeras. The same temp template. He's like stitched demons together of like different oh, parts. Yeah. It's really... It has four faces too, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so. it's really creepy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so right here we're going to set up our health with this uh, enemy right here. We're gonna roll past this first attack. And he's, he should be an explosion now. We're gonna run at it and take a counter hit. That will allow us to set up the exact HP we need. Uh, for clever outing range for this class, uh, you need 184 HP. This sets us at 183, which also should be just enough to be able to tank one of the lesser hits from man eater. So, so that's the boss coming up. Very infamous, both in casual playthroughs and speedruns. I personally don't find it as bad as some, but it is it is a tough one. To we do with. call yeah, it so first, run eaters for a reason. Yep, yep, yep. Gonna apply a fire buff now, and here we go. All right, so the Man Eaters Arena is a really interesting one. It's one really not long, narrow bridge, and a boss that has a tendency to fly off. While this fight is very RNG heavy, Berta will try and manipulate the direction of the Man Eater to dash towards him um, and stay on the bridge and not away, because that honestly would waste time. Optimally, we're gonna, just like there, kill the first Man Eater because there is a second. Luckily, the bosses are identical to each other, so if all goes well, we should be taking them out in the same manner there is no phase one no phase two this fight is looking really clean mm, yeah that was good i was a little scary earlier because i couldn't see what he was doing for my fire attack so i couldn't tell he was exploding but i i, I could kind of tell so thankfully i rolled it yeah but he didn't fly away survive, which is fantastic yeah that was nice the second one flying off isn't too big a deal but you're good reason why they're okay, called so now, eaters yeah they pretty much easily kill you Oh, yeah, now we got Old Monk, that's the arch theme of this level. A uh, very unique boss, even among the unique bosses of this game, because it used to be a multiplayer boss. Uh, you can actually be summoned, if you already killed the boss yourself, you can actually be summoned as the boss. Uh, very unique feature. But sadly, the servers are officially down for Demon Souls, so you can't do this anymore. But, remake? Remake? Hopefully, hopefully they bring back the remake, I would be very happy. <laughs> I'm gonna evade all of you. Oh yeah, Burrow's uh, very well known for PvPing quite a bit, so maybe you get mm -hmm. to PvP a GDQ runner. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm ready. Yeah, but, but unfortunately for this boss, it actually gets reduced to a simple NPC-like enemy that only has a couple of things up his sleeve. And we already took care of him, so... He is very basic. There he goes. Very basic, and uh, he, he can't kill you because you're on clever iron range, but... He has very fast attacks, but it's as long as he's spaced right and he doesn't give you too bad of an RNG, he's pretty simple. All I can think of is doo doo doo. Mm -hmm, the Twitch chat emote doo doo doo. Doo doo. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, now we're going to Valley of the Falament, um, you know, the infamous swamp esque area of every Souls game. Uh, although this first one doesn't have too much of that yet. Uh, we're going to quickly pick up a Rory Lotus, which is a poison healing item, and then we're going to make our way to a small little skip coming up now. So Valley of Defilement has a lot of these like rickety platforms that take quite a bit to traverse and a lot of annoying uh, goblins in the way. We're gonna do a nice little skip that uh, circumvents like a little, few of these levels. Um, it's called a slope quit. Uh, the slope actually in this game delays fall damage from kicking in. So Berta's gonna fall on top of, oh, fall on the slope, prevent damage from kicking in. And just as his character splats the ground, he's gonna reload the game. And doing it just in time, he doesn't take any damage from this drop and he loads at the bottom. It's just a nice slow time save. You got it down. Nice, cool. good job. Thank you. Oh. Please don't. <laughs> I, I definitely have died there before. <laughs> Almost repeated it. Thankfully I caught myself. That's not the right way to <laughs> okay. go around the bridge. Yeah, I... <laughs> Most people try and go across it. it. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so that was scary, but uh, fun fact about rolling in this game, uh, you actually have collision on your roll, so you can actually push some enemies out of the way. Unfortunately, these ones up ahead don't have, you don't have enough space to really push them out of the way, so you gotta shoot them real quick. Oh, and then this guy's gonna get in the way, okay. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Man, I can't believe I almost fell through that. <laughs> I have one clip where that happened to me before where I fall there, because I just went too fast, but I caught myself in time, thank you. Okay, so now we got Leechmonger. Uh, we're gonna do another fire or another buff animation cancel. No, we're not. Okay, that's okay. Never mind. <laughs> we shit off the first one, so that's, that's okay. Yeah, Leechmonger itself, he's not too bad. As you can see, we're already half health with just one stamina bar. Only thing to note is that he does have uh, tick damage with leeches that are on the ground, so you just gotta keep an eye on your health. And some of his attacks do hurt a little bit, so not hard. Just keep an eye on your health at all times. Hey. Don't need clever rat ring unless you're insane. Yeah. <laughs> who, who put a Resident Evil boss in my Demon Souls game? 
Mm, no, I didn't realize we're playing Resident Evil Zero. <laughs> yeah, those are the pretty disgusting boss. You know, all things considered. Yeah, so here would be another uh, place where we could do a, a slope uh, quit out skip. Uh, we're not going to do that one because it is a little bit more dangerous, a little harder to do. And also the way I do it personally is a little bit uh, more tough on the RTA. It takes a little bit longer because I do a full quit out instead of a reload, so... I'm just going to skip it and go this way. She only loses a couple of seconds. But yeah, so now that we're over the swamp, this swamp actually inhibits us from running properly. Uh, this is a very nerf version of the run. And rolling entirely. We can't roll at all in the swamp, so... One way that we mitigate a little bit of the time loss from that is by toggling our weapon between one-handed and two-handed. As you can see, my stamina bar up ahead on top, uh, it regains a little bit of stamina once I switch these stances. And that's just a nice way to save a couple seconds throughout this tire swamp. We'll also be picking up a few items here. We're going to get the cat ring, black turpentine, and thief ring. Have you spotted her? Not yet. Where is she? Wait, where is she actually? Oh, there she is. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's see, so there, there is an enemy here that could be very dangerous. Uh, oh, no. Okay. Okay, we're gonna have to deal with her in a second. First, let's get the cat ring. Okay, there she is. Birdo and um, I have been calling her Shrek lately. Yeah. Because <laughs> she just wants you out of her swamp. She'll aggressively you... chase you down. Oh, God. Mm hmm yeah, we're okay. That wasn't too bad. The, the roll isn't a bad attack. There, there's one attack that's really dangerous and hard to avoid, but... Thankfully, she was kind of nice. But yeah, so we got Cat Ring. Uh, that ring will allow us to do a few uh, skip later on. Uh, essentially, what Cat Ring does, it, fall, it, it works like Fall Control in Dark Souls 1 and a few of the other games, where it negates fall damage, uh, but it also does help us, kind of like the slope skip, to uh, just negate a death that would definitely be... A fall that would definitely become death, essentially, so... Really very useful. Uh, black Turpentine, uh, essentially the same as Turpentine, but it's stronger and lasts a little bit less. This time. And then Thief Ring, lastly, uh, doesn't make us invisible to enemies, but they have a... You know, the, the, the line side is a little bit shorter, so they, the, they'll notice us a little bit later. It'll be helpful for a lot of the areas coming up. Uh, although we're not going to do that quite yet. So we're gonna put it on after the fog gate over there. Yeah, so I almost forgot to heal there also. Oh wow, <laughs> yeah, I just noticed that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we definitely need to heal for the next boss coming up. Um, so the favoring that he's doing is really just handy for running through very like uh, enemy heavy areas like this one in Valley of Development. There's a lot of goblins um, that will try and like interject our way. That was that scary. was I'm gonna reload real quick just to be safe. Yeah, reloads in this game also reset aggros uh, of enemies, so it's really handy. Um, yeah, just for safety. We did put the thief ring on there where he got hit by the goblin because he actually wants them to behave a certain way and not be delayed, but, you know, unfortunate RNG there. But we do put it on after this fog gate, so when running through the file, if defilement to the next boss, enemies, like, spot us just a second too late, um, and we slip on by. Um, and Berta will like equip the thief ring on and off during different segments of this run based on how he wants the enemies to behave around him. Whether they, he wants them to notice them instantaneously or, you know, slightly delayed. Mm -hmm. Or maybe in some cases just for boss fights, we usually put the master's ring back on, but not always. Yeah, so that, that wasn't too bad. Really lucky. But this, this, those enemies have a really annoying attack. They can definitely kill you when you're in Clever Rat, so that's where he healed. Uh, we're gonna stay topped off for the boss's will. Um, Dirty Colossus. He uh, he's not a hard boss necessarily, but he is very random in a way that I just don't like for clever wrapping range. Um, you can also kind of climb him sometimes based on his like slopey feet. Uh, you will sometimes just start climbing him for some reason, even though he, even though his name is Shadow the Col or Dirty Colossus. This isn't Shadow the Colossus. So I don't know why that happens like that. Funny enough, Blue Point to remake Shadow of Colossus is remaking Demon Souls, so. Mm -hmm. that, that might be why. Maybe they saw that Thank there was you. a Colossus boss. No. Yeah, so we did take one hit from the boss just to be able to set clever for the next boss. Uh, Main Astraya, the arch team of this level. Really interesting okay. arch demon. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After Leechmonger and Dirty Colossus, you would expect that. 
you know, it'll be another grotesque monster type enemy, but as you'll see soon, it's actually quite the opposite, I would say. Um, first we fight his, her, uh, Knight Garl of Inland. Unfortunately, he's gonna go down very quickly with our color the right, we just get behind him, backstab, a couple of our ones, and he's already down. And then heal real quick, because we are gonna go into another swampy area that could hurt us. Um, but yeah, now that you see her, uh, we she, we go talk to her. She, because she's defenseless, however, she essentially just kills herself. It is very sad. Yeah, it's she's an archdemon, actually, that took in the demon's power to help the plagued uh, citizens of Valley of Defilement. So she's just defenseless without her protector. She's just there as a benevolent demon, if anything. Yeah. <laughs> Makes you question the morality of our journey overall. Yeah, so now we're in China Storms. Uh, this first area of it, for one is a little bit infamous for uh, their really aggressive skeleton enemies. Uh, it should be okay as long as they behave, which might be asking for a lot, but we'll see. These skeletons are really spooky. Ooh, okay, that's seems clean. Let me just see how they stack up here. That should be okay, actually. Yeah, that Oops, went really well because I find these skeletons some of the more aggressive ones. They can okay. really they get hot on their heels. Hit, and then one would follow me, but... <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. God. Yeah, we're good, though. It's okay to take a few hits, because we do notice a clever at ring range. Okay, here we got a quick little skip called the Shrine of Storm skip. Uh, all it does is, you know, skip the whole level. That's no big it. deal. No big deal. Just a, just a roll to skip the whole level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's fairly simple. It is just a little bit of parkour. Uh, there's no invisible wall that you need to take care of, so... But it does skip pretty much the entire level. It's pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah, now we got our first boss of this level, uh, Judicator. Uh, just as the other ones, it's gonna be really quick. The early game ones. Two hits on his stomach on the cleaver there to knock him down. And then three hits on, this, on the head, on the bird on the head, and we're done. Put on Cat Ring and touch this Archstone for safety. Cat Ring will be using for a skip shortly. Yeah, and you'll see the cat ring right next to the cute little rat under the stamina bar. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I better see that in the remake or I'm going to get a refund. It's actually the developer's cat. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. just like yeah, a, one of them. Like, realistic cat inserted into Demon's yeah. Souls. Literally just a JPEG of someone's cat. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, so we're going to hit this illusory wall and right behind there we're going to do the old hero skip. We're skipping the entire boss of this called old hero. Uh, let's see. Okay, we got it. Uh, so yeah, all that happens there is that this, that part of the cliff, specifically that I ran to, has no death, uh, death box or kill cam. Um, or the other kill, way around. Kill box, yeah. Kill box and, and death, death cam. cam. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all we have to worry about then is the fall damage once we get down here, so... That's what we use the cat ring for. We negate that damage with cat ring and then reload, and we're done. Basically, like scoop, scoop. Yeah, now we're gonna have to take out these little manneries. We're gonna have to kill six of. Okay, they're a little far away. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah, count them with me, chat. One, two, three, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> four. Uh, uh. Five. You have to take oh, out six. Five. To basically get yep. the Storm King to notice you. Six. Okay. Anger his, uh, anger him by killing his children. So, um, Bird is actually going to take off his headphones here to hear the children shooting at him. As you can see, they're definitely firing uh, missiles at him. He's just basically looking for the audio cues to avoid dying. He's going to run to the far end of the arena here, um, basically to set up uh, the kill on. <laughs> Storm King, oh boy. Um, he's gonna use his upgraded longbow of plus nine, uh, and then hopefully with good RNG and a good cycle, he'll be able to take him out in like one pass over. If all goes bad, he'll have to basically run around all the Storm Children and wait for Storm King to make a flight back to take him out. And it's really, really dangerous. So we would definitely want to get us in one cycle. And that was it. Next, you'll binding to Nexus. And that was an Archdemon. Uh... One of those got really close. Yeah, I, was I saw scared. that. <laughs> I, heard, I heard the sharp intake of your breath. <laughs> yep, that scared me. But thankfully we made it, so good stuff. Hence taking off yeah, headphones. So, uh, 
Yeah, I need to be able to hear those. My, my game is on speakers, so. Okay, so now we're going back to the the first level. This is actually the last uh, stretch of the run now. Um, we're going back to the Baltar Palace after Phalanx. Uh, basically, all we're going to do here is try to run through a bridge that's going to be shot at by uh, dragons. So as long as we got good stamina management and cycling, uh, that should be all we need to do. So this is actually a good time for, say, two donations. Okay, we've got plenty. Uh, Carl Germ donates $50 and writes, Go, Berto, go. So excited to see you running at GDQ. Any chance you can save Lord Rydell before you finish the run? After all, he's asking nicely. Oh, and hi, Ashwin. Hi. <laughs> I don't know about that, Carl. Maybe with incentives, but not today. Okay, uh, we have a $5 donation from Hiking Metal Punk, who writes, Shout out to Squint on the mic. Your run of Demon Souls was one of the first Let's Plays I ever watched. Cool to see you hosting for this excellent run. Well, thank you, Hiking Metal Punk. I am privileged to be here. Very OG player. Okay. So, seems to be okay. Yeah, we should be good. So all we're gonna do here is get past this last segment of the bridge. We're gonna use Black Tepertine and our dagger for this next boss. Uh, try to talk a lot of it, okay. Um, we're gonna use that Black Tepertine because it's a little bit more DPS than the Battle Axe at the moment. Uh, but yeah, Tower Knight. Uh, we're gonna swipe at his heels a little bit to knock him down and then just finish him off by hitting him in the head. I'm surprised he didn't use Dagger there. This is, um... <laughs> one of my favorite bosses. I call him Budget Iron Golem. Just because yep. he's a lot like Iron Golem and he falls a lot like Roberto's dad in Sekiro. Yeah, and it triggers me every time. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I I think it's more cool than Iron Golem. It's a knockoff. It's a knockoff. knockoff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cheap knockoff being Iron Golem. <laughs> Let's settle on uh, disagreeing here. Sure. Yeah. So uh, we um, we're gonna get past these docks here, and there's gonna be another instance we have to roll through some boulders. We need iframes again. And then right here we're gonna do a quick reload to get some enemies behind us instead of in front of us. Uh, that will, you know, clear this pathway you have ahead. But this is actually another good time for maybe three donations as well. Oh wow, I can do that. Um, mm -hmm. We have a $15 donation from This Is Langman, who writes, had to donate for the Streets of Rage 4 combo exhibition in honor of my son Jones. I couldn't have beat Mania Mode without his help. Let's get a zero issues run. Uh, we also have a $1,000 donation oh, wow. from uh, P Mole DQ, and they write Kanabo GDQ, sending positive energy to the hardware so it handles all the new viewers. <laughs> well, thank you. That's a lot. Uh, and we have a $500 donation from Mark76. SGDQ is here again, and I am so excited. I have been following it for several years now, and it makes me happy to see it going, even during all the trouble in the world. Let's see some games get destroyed and see some awesome runs. Thank you, guys. Okay, so right here, um, we're gonna be going up to another boss, and we're gonna be setting up Clever Rat Ring range again by having these uh, crossbow archers shoot at Birdo. He's just gonna stand there and take it <laughs> until he gets to the optimum. Oh. Well, that can happen. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, unfortunate. Just, I got hit by another one in the back while I was trying to turn around. They maybe behaved a little too well. That is true. I haven't had issues in practice until now. <laughs> it's okay. It happens. It's marathon. Yeah, it's okay. But maybe in the run-up, yeah. we can get, like, one or two donations before we get back there again? Mm -hmm. Sure. We have a... $25 donation from Decent Speedies, who writes, Berto, amazing to see you open GDQ this year. This run has been incredible so far. So proud of you. Best of luck on the run. Oh, that's Thank so you. sweet. That, that, that's another event that I ran at uh, earlier this year. We have a thank you, decent. $30 anonymous donation. So thank you, anonymous. Thank you. So all these things are just all these balls we don't have to run through anymore or roll through because they're already where they're they already set off basically. Oh, no, 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 let me know. Okay. 
a few enemies are act a little bit different in the second one for this level since it's uh, a lot of the traps already set off and such. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this level doesn't like me today. <laughs> it's okay. You're showing off all the worst possible things that could technically happen. I mean, like, it's not an easy game to run at all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very true. Like, just having to deal with, like, manipulating the enemy AI to behave the way you want, getting good RNG and everything. Like, a death doesn't always imply, like, someone is, like, let's say, a bad runner or anything. It just sometimes just what the, like, what the cards deal to you. Um, and speeding, yeah, especially this game. Yeah, speedrunning uh, a game like this really requires you to think quickly on your feet and making the right decision in a split second sometimes. And that's hard. It's not easy. He makes it yep. look easy, and it's okay if we have yeah. like a death or two, it happens. Yeah, the, the run has been pretty clean so far, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not too upset about these, but... I mean... It'll be nice if we get to the boss soon. Yeah, this place casually in the speed run is just very hard to traverse. It's not, it's not a fun segment to run through. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, ninja's not being known, okay. Yeah, they're really blocking you today. Yeah. Oh, almost happened again. It almost feels like running through this place the first time is a lot better. Oh man, I remember uh, this is one of the first, like in my first, uh, you know, speedrun attempts for this game. This is one of the levels I definitely was stuck on for. Oh, I remember. I remember. <laughs> yeah, like an like an hour maybe. Like <laughs> was what was? Long. How long was your first speedrun attempt of this game? Uh, the, my first PB was like two hours and twenty two minutes. Yeah, so. two hours and twenty two minutes, and a bunch of us were sitting and watching Berto do the speed run, and he died and died and died in this segment over and over. But we were still mm -hmm. cheering him on to keep going because a PB is a PB, you know. You start somewhere. Yeah, especially the first one. Ooh, okay, so the setup yeah. there was great. So we have still one more dangerous segment uh, before we get to the um, next boss. We have these wonderful three knights that sort of block your path up the stairs to the boss. Um, and uh, they have these insane, like, spear thrust attacks that Birdo is going to basically try and bait out by holding up a shield to block. And they should just bounce right off his shield, and he'll be able to run home free to the boss. That was good. Thank you. I'm glad that you made yeah. that. Because those knights that are scary. Good. That was good, but also almost hit by an arrow. Yeah. <laughs> the way that I mean, that's why you turn your cam. You want to make sure you see what's coming at you. Yeah, so yeah, next box, Penetrator. Not a very hard one. Definitely have never died to him. You know, didn't die to him like the other day either. <laughs> Please don't say that in this attempt. <laughs> You'll scare yeah, me. No, we're good. We already got him. There you go. He's already dead. I don't know what you're worrying no, about. No, it's, it's kind of funny that um, FromSoft decided to have the same track for Penetrator and Tower Knight with a ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and I kind of yeah. wonder if that was like executed on purpose or whether they just That's ran out of soundtracks. Uh, this is the world with the most bosses, so it's possible they just, I don't know, they, they want to reuse one instead of making a whole new one, who knows. Um, but yeah, Penetrator wasn't too hard, just two cycles of our ones, and that's it, pretty much. But yeah, now we're gonna, we're actually in the last level of the run now. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna come up to King Alant himself, or, or is it? For anyone watching, the stress does not end here. Birdo just died twice on this level, and that happens. This boss is mega scary so i don't know uh -huh. i know i'm gonna be clenched up in this fight while watching this um he's nothing to trifle with no nope. and i'm actually gonna fight in full health as well the only other boss i do because even though i can beat him in clever rat he's very dangerous and just especially after those deaths i would prefer to you know be a little bit more safe have a few a little bit of room there for air so Berto running through this area is uh, a lot like the rest of the game. He's basically trying to outrun the cycle of the dragon breath before he shoots him down and avoiding all the other enemies in his way. This as well, not easy to do casually and annoying to do in a speed run, but with good management, good positioning, you can get through the cycles pretty safely. Yeah, this is the one area that a lot of people who play the game casually after they start speedrunning were like, Berto, how the hell do you get past this area? <laughs> so fast. This is why you don't want it to fight is, uh, this uh, boss more than you have to, because running back is the killer. Yeah. After we got past our best friend, Ostrava, um, we're gonna just real quickly rearrange our items real quick. We got a good elevator right up to fill up with tension. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. Yep. I'm nervous. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, 
Ostrava there is his best friend because he's snuck into the elevator with Birdo before on like PB attempts mm -hmm. to uh, the next boss, yep. King Galant. We got really close that day. So we told you a little bit about the lore where we had to amass all of our strength to face King Galant. This is the fight and he's very RNG heavy. He's very imposing and we're going to do it at full health because he has a potential to kill the run. Um, and even at full health, this boss is very scary. So even though we're doing it at full health, and with clever, uh, not without clever rat ring range, we're extending this fight more than we have to, but it's safer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all these guys are gonna put up black turpentine spear. Enjoy this fight. Yeah, this might be a little bit longer. Good luck. Thank you. Do we have time for donations here? Sure. Okay. Uh, Five dollars from Sardonis, who writes, "Great job on the run, Berto. Doing the Souls community proud." <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we also have $30 from Ace Barredo, who writes, Hey, OGDQ, as per usual, you all are helping an amazing cause, but this year, more than ever, we need MSF to help those in need. Thank you for putting this virtual event on, going toward the Streets of Rage combo exhibition. Okay. He's, he's, he's behaving for the most part. Mm -hmm. Being okay. So... In this fight, Bird is gonna apply Black Turpentine on several times just for that damage output. Um, it will run out several times in this fight, which is fine. And sometimes Birdo will heal because King Galant has a habit of like reacting faster than you can deal with him. Um, quite often, actually. Some, and then one of the other scary things that he does is sometimes he just walks at you really, really slowly with like no sign of what he's gonna do. Um, and that can really like wig you out because you want like an indication of what he's gonna do next and him just walking at you slowly, there's nothing you can do because this boss is very reactive. We're not gonna be aggressive. We're gonna wait for him to come to us and uh, try yeah, and take Yeah, he had us. a little bit of walk session there. Yeah, yeah he did, quickly. he did. And that's really scary. Yeah, I think I even used that to bait him, but he wasn't doing it. Yeah, please don't greet at the end there. Oh. And we got him. Nice. Oh, okay, that wasn't Good too job. bad. <laughs> I was really Thank scared. You. I saw the sliver of HP and I was like, oh god, is he gonna greed? <laughs> I mean, I, I did kind of, but it worked out. It's okay. okay. Greed always works. <laughs> Lesson of today. I'm more relaxed now. <laughs> yeah, hey. There's actually a small chance of uh, soft luck in this part. Um, if you if you next to a out of a boss too early, you can actually just. The game won't know, or it will register the boss is dead, but it won't really register that you can progress to the, to the world, so. Thankfully, you didn't get it, though. It was, it was pretty safe in my next year by me. But yeah, so. This would actually be a really good time to close incentives as we could take on this last boss for the ending. Yes. All right, we have $1,000 from C. Gordon, who writes, thank you for a week of amazing runs by amazing runners organized by amazing people for an amazing cause. GDQ hype. Nice, and we're done. That was actually the true King Galant. The one that we saw earlier was like a demon projection of himself. Like King Galant like took the power okay. of the old one and became this blob. Okay. Time and now. That's it. That's Steam and Souls chat. Thank you for having me, GDQ. Uh, oof. Those deaths were a little bit. What's, what, what is our time, actually? I'm not sure. I don't have the time. Seeing uh, coming up here. 51 minutes, 42.6 seconds. 51, really? That's a lot better than I thought it would be. Nice. Yeah, those deaths, I guess, weren't too bad. All right. We're done, chat. Uh, GDQ, thanks for having me. This is uh, it was an honor to open. I was definitely shocked the day I found out that I was uh, opening GDQ. Uh, like I was like, pleased about being accepted, but it was a shock. <laughs> but yeah, so um, Evan Berto, please. Uh, I I stream on Twitch. Uh, usually do speedruns on Fridays. Um, so if you want to watch more of this, I'll probably do some attempts um, for PBing. You know, this Friday or so. Um, to also check out Ashwin, she also runs uh, on Fridays, but she runs Star Souls, but she is, you know, thinking of uh, picking up Demon Souls sometime, That's what you want, hopefully. yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Birdo is uh, really avid about Demon Souls. It's probably like one of his uh, favorite Souls games, and uh, not a lot of people run Demon Souls. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's definitely the most overshadowed game. Like even like both casually and speedrunning, there's a game that not a lot of people remember. Uh, and it, it would be awesome if people start like you know gain interest in watching this. This is the first GDQ run for Demon Souls since 2016, I believe. Mm -hmm. correctly. Yep, that's um, right. So hopefully some people get interested. Pick up the PlayStation 3 or the remake. You know that also be fun. I hope I'm sure it'll be very different from this this speedrun, but I, anything will do. PS I know Birdo would be more than willing to teach quite a few people on there. And I think even on the leaderboard he has guides for this game. Um, so mm, if anyone yeah. wants to pick you, up, you can you can personally contact me if you need any help. I'm willing to help any. But yeah, uh, thank you for having me, GDQ. Uh, good luck to the next runners. Good luck to the whole event. Hope you guys donate plenty. Good cause. But yeah, uh, I'll see you guys around. Thank you for having us. Bye-bye. <laughs>
JB151 with a $5 donation and the message, good luck to all the runners. We're going to take an ad break right here, but please stick around. We have a $25 donation from Slick88, who writes, Grand Upper! Super hyped for Mike Uyama playing Streets of Rage 4. We have a $30 donation from Salmon Thrice, and they say, So excited to see a Streets of Rage 4 speed run for GDQ. Best of luck to Mike and a huge shout out to the awesome Streets of Rage 4 community. So many great runners and great people. You all rock. We have a $750 donation from Mott. Time for some donations raised quick.
Hello, everybody. My name is Lat Mackey, and you are watching Summer Games Done Quick 2020. Before we get into all the more fun donations and everything that's coming up with Streets of Rage 4, run by the one, the only, Mike Uyama, we are going to throw it over for an interview right this second. So here we go. Time for interview time. And welcome, everyone, back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020. I'm Spike Vegeta. You just got to watch an awesome run of Demon Souls. Making sure I hit the demons, not Demon Souls, Demon Souls. We got awesome runs <laughs> coming up later, like Rayman Legends, Ico, and Shovel Knight, King of Cards. But before that, we have got a rare, as far as I'm concerned, speedrun sighting. It's going to be of Streets of Rage 4, and it's going to be from the founder of GDQ himself, the daddy, Mike Uyama. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm excited for the run. Um, all of my practice runs have been going well. So I, I'm uh, I'm just I, I think it'll be a fun run uh, to watch. Yeah, definitely. I love the Streets of Rage series. Awesome to see Streets of Rage 4, one of the newest games in the marathon getting shown off right here. I want to talk to you a little bit, Mike. A lot of people know you as obviously the founder of GDQ. Um, they probably second know you for your love of awful video games. <laughs> yes. And a lot of people might not know you. I remember back in the late 2000s, back in, and we're going to get a little nostalgic here, Speed Demos Archive days. You yes. were one of the most talented speedrunners in the world. I loved watching you for all your Contra runs, stuff like Contra 3, uh, stuff like Turtles in Time. Absolutely love that game. Uh, for you personally in kind of your speedrun catalog, what you've pulled from, what are the major factors that attract you to any given speed game? What makes you want to pick it up? Um, well, I think that's uh, changed over the years um, because it used to be very action oriented uh, and heavy on the action, as you know, you know, Contra, Metal Slug, um, you know, Turtles Subterranean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, with Subterranean, I, I started to, to, ve to veer down the rabbit hole of uh, bad or awful or weird games. Um, and uh, it, it, it's it's one that I've never really escaped from, even as I'm playing uh, Streets of Rage Four <laughs> right now, right now, which it, which is a good game. It, it is it is. A, I was gonna say I think we've or, 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 this is or one even of the a great games. game, but yes, exactly. Uh, but when it comes to a game, it just has to have a certain charm for me, at least like on some sort of audio and visual level, and then um, it needs to have some kind of uh gameplay mechanic that is mm, i guess rewarding or intriguing in some sense um for sure. although for bad games it's less rewarding and more like <laughs> engaging and i don't mean engaging <laughs> as in like oh this you know this has so much replay value or you know this is a really great mechanic it's engaging as in like wow this is something that's never been done in a game before <laughs> or since and there's a reason why. <laughs> I want to build on that a little bit. Again, people, again, they know you for the awfuls game love. Right. I want to ask you, what are some of your favorite awful games, awful game runs that have been showcased at GDQs over the years? Well, I'm definitely a fan of both animorphs runs both the agq 2016 mm. and the agq 2020 run the bed uh, <laughs> uh, yeah um so i'm also a big fan of the arabian nights run yes. yes and that was probably the only run that we've had where it had technical issues and the technical issues actually added to the experience. <laughs> of the um, So let's jump forward to today right uh, now. Okay. Let's talk a uh, little bit about your streets of rage Four run. Uh, this is one. If you go to speedrun.com looking through it, there are a ton of different categories like yes. the streets of rage style, different characters you can play as you'll be running the blaze category on arcade mania. Uh, tell me a little bit about what particularly attracts you to this category. It looks like this is kind of the only one you've really put too much time into um i've also put time into the cherry mania category so okay. about mania uh i just prefer playing that difficulty because i generally like to play the hardest difficulty in games mm -hmm. and 
Uh, I haven't really touched the other difficulties in this game, to be honest. Right. Uh, you don't actually start with Mania. You have to unlock it. And then ever since I've unlocked it, it's been the only difficulty that that's I've really all. Yeah, on. the game might as well just be set up for just that difficulty. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, I find it more fun because there's more enemies and it's just more chaotic and more challenging. Mm -hmm. um, and about the character that I chose, um, I think I first started playing Blaze just because um, I thought she was like a pretty like well-balanced, like fundamentals character who's like, you know, she's not like super flashy, but she has like good um, beat em up basics. And then... Mm -hmm. It turns out that as the as we started finding new tech in the game develop more and more, it turns out she's actually one of the strongest characters in the game and just has a ton of combos. <laughs> oh, baby. So we can be excited for some awesome combos, some good DPS, good beating up of thugs later yes. on in this. You will, you will see a lot of her offensive special, uh, Kikosho. Um, okay. It's a very, very powerful move because it has it's quick it has big range it has a uh, good z-axis coverage or uh, gigantic aoe and um it also sets up wall bounce juggles oh all right all right sounds pretty sexy definitely looking forward to it yeah. Uh, you bring up the combos we've actually got uh, for an incentive for your run for just the second run of this marathon, uh, which I'm hoping like I'm hearing in my earpiece at this point is getting met at this point. But you got a combo showcase for that. Yes. Incentive. You want to tell us a little bit about what, what we can maybe expect for that, what we can get excited for? Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I'll definitely be showing off a lot of combos with Blaze, but honestly, the truth is... Um, most of the characters in this game have really cool combos and you don't really see them in the run because, you know, I'm only playing one character. But uh, this incentive lets me show off a lot of cool combo properties and just cool combos um, with with, with uh, a lot of the characters in the game. Um, for those of you not aware, uh, you not you can not only play as the five Streets of Rage 4 characters, but you can also play it as the uh, unlockable retro characters um, from Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3. Oh, and uh, But they've been updated with the Streets of Rage 4 uh, juggle mechanics, so they, they have combos that were definitely not possible in the, in the games they were featured in. And the final question I have for you, my friend, is... 10 years now, 10 years of GDQs in the books. We just celebrated 10 years this past January in Orlando. What aspects of GDQ's legacy are you most proud of? Is it the total donations? Is it just bringing more, hundreds and thousands of people into the community, just spreading speedrunning awareness to everyone, providing the entertainment? What is the single aspect that you are most proud of? Um, I think... It would be just seeing how speedrunning and the community and just the generosity has grown uh, over the years. Um, and also just how, like, I don't know, inclusive in general, the uh, speedrunning community is. There's, you know, there's some gatekeeping in gaming, I guess you could say, and some toxicity. Sure. And I feel like even though, yes, that does exist in this, you know, in certain parts of speedrunning, um, I feel like it's it's not as present in speedrunning as it is in other gaming communities. For sure. And uh, and I feel like, um, you know, just the events growing and being inclusive is uh, probably what I'm most proud of. Um, and if you asked me like 10 years ago, or <laughs> like right after CGDQ, you know, classic games done quick, the first marathon that it would, you know, grow this much. And, you know, there would be so many more people watching and, you know, raising, you know, millions of dollars in events. Uh, I would be like, are you kidding me? Like, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> Never, I, the, the numbers were unfathomable. I remember getting to be there with you when we hit yeah. the million the first time and now triple that all of a sudden for some yeah, of these yeah. events. 
Mike, you bring up inclusivity in in uh, speed running and in this community. You were always inviting to me when I wanted to first start coming to GDQs nine years ago. Thank you to you and everybody else. This has been a great community we have been able to build. And here's to 10 more years of great GDQs, great runs, and some awful video games that you'll be running at them. <laughs> but not Streets of Rage 4. We're going to have a great one. No, for Streets you guys. of Rage 4 is a great video game. <laughs> So definitely looking forward to that. Michael Yama, thank you very much for joining me and best of luck in the run, my friend. All right. Uh, thank you, Spike. And we are back, everyone. How is everyone doing out there in the chat? You are watching Summer Games Done Quick Online 2020. And we have just hit 13,475 bucks, folks. Keep the donations coming in. We are going to be here all week putting on a great show. Here we have a few donations coming up for the upcoming runs. Here we go. We have, one, we have a $200 donation from Marcus154 that says, Nothing like waking up to GDQ. Couldn't agree with you more, Marcus. We also have some love coming in from Mike Uyama, who's up next. Bill Conti, $25, says, good luck on your run, Mike. This goes out to you and the rest of the Streets of Rage community. And you may be asking yourself, what are we raising money for? Well, let me help you out here. Doctors Without Borders, MSF, is an international medical humanitarian aid organization that works in over 70 countries around the world, providing life-saving medical humanitarian care and speaking out about what they see in those areas. Their work aids people based solely on need, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or political affiliation. MSF is committed to safeguarding their patients' rights to autonomy, confidentiality, and informed consent. 90% of their staff is national, meaning they live locally and are from, the, from their country that they work in. MSF relies mainly on the generosity of an individual donations, with over 90% of MSF's income coming from private donors giving small amounts. It's a really important cause, and that is what your money is going for. Every cent helps goes towards MSF. And speaking of Doctors Without Borders, we have a $1,000 donation from JDW159. It says, this may be the most challenging time we collectively experience. And I know many people who normally donate will be unable to right now. For those of you who can't, consider this a donation on your behalf to get us off to a great start. MSF is uniquely positioned to help us address the problems the world is facing right now, and they deserve whatever help we can offer. Thank you so much, JDW, for your donation. It gives me goosebumps to read it. That is awesome. What a great representation of the community and the cause. And we have a $500 donation from Josh177 that says, been watching for years, finally had the means to donate. Pog. Thanks, Josh. And man, do these donations keep coming in. Sean227 don donates $5 and says, as I have told our, uh, our lovely host Lat in the past, <laughs> thanks, Sean, I have, finally fa I have family friends in the Navajo Nation and seeing the work Doctors has done to save this endangered populace makes me feel very good, even if this is a small donation. So I'm splitting this donation between Witcher 3, Save Siri, and Ghostbusters Egon, because someone's got to tell us about the Twinkie. <laughs> good luck, Mike. Rage in those streets.
Stan Stin donates $10 and says, can't wait for Streets of Rage 4. Watching it with my four-year-old who's experiencing SGDQ for, SGDQ, SGDQ for the first time. What a great event and good luck, Mike. Thank you so much, Stan. And thank you so much to your four-year-old who's experiencing this for the first time. How cool. So everyone, we still have time to get donations in for your bid war. There are a few of them associated with Streets of Rage 4 right now. Help us get there. We are getting close. We need your help. We have a $100 donation from Dr. Doss that says, super excited for the Streets of, War, Streets of Rage 4 run. I've been watching your streams and they motivated me to keep playing arcade mode while slowly upping the difficulty. Hope we get to see a double divas playable Rue when? Thank you so much, Dr. Doss. We have a $10 donation from JackJack89 that says, first GDQ with my dad and looking forward to Streets of Rage 4 and hello neighbor. Good luck to all the runners. Hope y'all raise a, a of money. <laughs> a shed load of money. Thank you so much, JackJack. A lot of love coming in for the runners, folks, on the donations. Thank you so much for sending those in. We have a $25 donation from the Hobo Couple that says, longtime fans of GDQ, good luck to all the runners. And also a $25 donation from Ant Honet that says, good luck, runners. We have a $10 donation from the Mighty Bill that says, it's finally time, Streets of Rage for hype. This is an amazing community to be a part of. I'd say good luck, Mike, but this game is definitely about to get bodied. <laughs> Show everyone how it's done for us. Shout out to the Mighty Gang, oos. We have a $25 donation from Ike Blue that says, always glad to chip in for MSF Doctors Without Borders. Donation goes to Refreshing Watermelon for Eco and Yorda after their ordeal. They deserve it. <laughs> 